There's way more to good composition than just taking pretty pictures. So in today's video, I'm gonna run through three creative composition techniques you can use to spice up your food photos. Hey guys, I'm Lauren. Welcome back to That Sage where we talk all about food photography to help you build the meaningful creative career you want. Today, I wanna to talk about composition, which is one of my favorite topics. Now, a great composition is not just about creating a visually stunning image. Sometimes it can also be about telling a subtly different story. And beyond classical composition techniques like the rule of thirds, there are actually a number of lesser known and lesser used composition techniques which can really help you create a more visually complex image and suggest a more intrinsic narrative. But before we get into all that, I wanna tell you that today's video is being sponsored by the amazing people over at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of classes on creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can take classes in a wide range of topics from photography to filmmaking, editing, and business, marketing, graphic design. There is something there for everyone. Right now, I'm diving into a film class by Mark Sosimo, who is a content and community manager over at Vimeo, about how to create a 60 second video with tools that you probably already have. These kinds of short videos are key in the food photography world as clients are often looking for short films that convey a story and their brand image in a visually stunning way. In this class, Mark is teaching the beginning to end process from how to storyboard effectively, plan the shots you wanna take, how to shoot, edit, and polish the video to make sure that you have a strong story running through as well as a great quality film. With Skillshare Premium, you get unlimited access to all the classes available on Skillshare. So you can really choose the ones in the topics that you need to help you work towards your goals. An annual subscription to Skillshare Premium is less than $10 a month, which if you ask me is totally worth it when you're investing in your further education and skill set. So because Skillshare are sponsoring this video, they are offering you guys two free months of Skillshare Premium so you can have a look around, take some classes and see if it's the right fit for you. So go ahead and click on the link in the description box and let me know in the comments which class you're gonna take first. So let's jump right in to some composition tips. Anyone who has ever shot architectural or interior photography knows the importance of getting all of those lines lined up perfectly with the edge of the frame, which is sound advice, but what about diagonals? And although they're often overlooked, diagonals can help transform a really plain, boring image into something fresh and unexpected, which makes it one of my favorite composition techniques to use. There's something about diagonals that just add a lot of movement and energy to a shot. If you imagine a shot where a subject is very squarely placed in the center of the frame, and one where they're off a bit to the side, throwing hand signs. So while a nicely squared off composition can come off as clean and organized, it can also make it look a bit static and stale. Incorporating diagonals into your composition is really gonna help liven it up and add a bit of dynamism. Often this technique works really well when you anchor it with the more classical composition techniques such as the rule of thirds. For example, this shot of these grilled artichokes featured here strictly follows the rule of thirds insofar as the sauce dish sits at the meeting point between the lower and the left hand third lines. Rather than interfering with the composition, the diagonally placed spoon and the edge of the roasting pan it, it interacts with help break up the predictable nature of the thirds. At the same time though, the diagonals also reinforce the importance of the thirds by drawing the eye down towards the sauce dish. What's more, using diagonals in the frame can really help you connect distant or unrelated objects. And it's also gonna help you break up the monotony and symmetry of repeat patterns such as stripes. Many people's first instinct when taking a picture is to just point the camera directly at the subject and press the shutter. 
it's a legitimate enough technique and it definitely leaves the viewer with no doubt as to what the subject is, but let's just say it's not one of the most creative compositions out there. In some ways, a totally centered shot is the equivalent of just pointing at something and saying, look at that. It's just, it's just a bit bland and boring and there's a lot more we can do as photographers to make our images more interesting. Depending on the kind of shot you're going for, just moving your subject slightly to the side, out of the center of the frame and even cropping it out can create a more unexpected and visually intriguing composition. What's more, when you really intentionally crop subjects, it gives the viewer the feeling that there's more going on outside the frame adding to a bigger visual narrative than what just what is contained within the photo. In order to successfully achieve an asymmetrical composition, you're gonna to need to keep two things in mind. Firstly, just because your subject is no longer in the center of the frame, doesn't mean that you should no longer consider it your hero. Be careful not to confuse the viewer by incorporating secondary dishes and props that are overpowering the hero dish in your composition. For example, in this image, there are two identical plates of pasta, yet viewers will be in little doubt as to which of the dishes they should look at first. This is because the hero dish on the right is sharply in focus, while the one on the left is somewhat blurred due to the shallow depth of field. Not only this, but while the right hand plate is decentered and has been partially cropped out of the frame, it nonetheless features much more prominently than the other plate on the left, only a small part of which is included in the shot. The addition of a fork next to the right hand dish further underlines its importance. Imagine if instead the fork was next to the plate on the left. This would likely make things a lot more confusing. The second thing to consider here is that shifting the subject off to one side of the composition is gonna upset the balance in this photo. While I'm gonna talk about the use of negative space in just a minute, in this particular case, it wouldn't really have made sense in this photo and would have left it feeling a bit boring. Instead, by showing just a portion of the secondary dish in this subject echoing the hero, it keeps the balance going in the frame, making this composition feel complete. In this case, the main subject on the right and the secondary subject on the left are both plates of pasta, but that doesn't in any way mean that when you're working with a decentered composition that both of your subjects have to be the same thing. In fact, this shot would have probably been just as successful if that secondary element wasn't a plate of pasta and instead was a smaller side dish of a salad or even just some cutlery. The key really is that it doesn't compete with the main hero subject, but it brings balance into the composition. You've likely already heard photojournalist Robert Kappa's famous line, if your photos aren't good enough, you're not close enough. There can be a lot of truth in this, and I think a lot of beginner food photographers could do well to frame their shots in a little bit tighter. But there's also an argument for giving compositions more space to breathe. And you can do this by incorporating large expanses of negative space in your images. But this doesn't mean that you should just go loose and sloppy with your compositions. A good use of negative space can result in compositions that are more powerful rather than less. In our daily lives, just as in photography, we tend to focus on a few specific things that we see and ignore a lot of the space in between them. When we look up at the sky and we see a bird flying through it, we see a bird flying through a big empty space. We don't see the shape of the sky wrapped around a bird. So the first step then in working with negative space is learning to look at it as if it's an object in and of itself. Only once you see negative space as a shape can you begin to use it as a compositional element in your photos. This shot of this carrot and ginger soup might have worked just as equally well with a much tighter Kappa-esque composition. For example, by cropping in to entirely fill the shot with just the bowls. However, it would have been a totally different photograph. As I ended up shooting it, the carrots, chopping board, napkin on the right, help give closure to the image and the frame the soup bowls, while the empty space to the top and left of the picture draw the eye down to the hero dish cut by hands at the bottom. My goal here was to add some restraint to the composition, making the shot feel much cleaner and more elegant than if I'd simply filled the entire frame with the subject. It's not a composition technique that you'll want to use every time, but certainly anyone looking to produce more delicate or minimal looking shots 
could look into using negative space more often. It's also important to remember that in order for composition techniques to really become effective, we need to absorb them so that they become second nature. While a lot of images by your favorite photographers will likely use some, if not all of these composition techniques, it's unlikely that they were actively thinking about them as they were shooting the images. Rather than being something that you actively think about every single time you're shooting a photo, the goal is really to make these compositional techniques instinctive. Personally, I find a great method of doing this is to simply look at a lot of work that you love and try and identify what is going on in that image compositionally. And this is really gonna help you be able to transfer those skills into your own work. Ultimately, if you shoot a lot and often, you're going to find that you naturally start incorporating these composition techniques into your own work. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out that link for two months of Skillshare Premium for free, and I will see you in the next video.